Welcome back to Everything Whiskey. I'm Callum. And I'm Sam. And today we're reviewing the Bakery Hill Classic Car Strength. Yeah. Uh, this is a follow up from our last episode. Two out of three, this is the uh, this is the next one. This is the same as the episode prior. So if you haven't seen that, check it out um, to get kind of a a base level idea of what the non castering version tasted like to us. Yep. This is like five minutes after that episode was shot, so hopefully our palate is, you know, the same. <laughs> anyway, now... For memory, um, this is basically... They're very similar notes as the classic, obviously, Crank Ducks. This is Car Strength. Yeah, which is, for this one, 60... 60.2. <laughs> Sixty point two. So it is. It's a beefy cut strength. This so it's fourteen point two percent higher than yeah. the original one. Yeah. Um, now again, just in case you haven't seen that episode, it is an Australian, Victorian, Melbourne uh, distillery. Yeah. So this is well and truly our neck of the woods. This bottle's batch uh, barrel is two thousand and nineteen. I'm not sure if that's just like the year. I think that might be the, the year. barrel was released. Yeah. The last one was like four thousand though. So maybe, maybe not. not. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, let's hop into the notes. Yeah, so I think the plan for these episodes, because we've had that introductory episode, mm. if you haven't seen it, we'll link it up above. Um, we'll just keep these ones short and sweet, because you have all the background in the first one, which yeah. we'll link above. Um, now, it's something I did forget to mention, which it's funny that the distillery mentions is... Um, that they, they make a point to mention on the back that uh, unlike many other single malts, no caramel is added to enhance the appearance. So, they I believe that. they're talking about, yeah, on the back. Uh, that's what I mean. It's funny that they make a point of saying that. Uh, I wasn't aware that, like, I, I know that dye is used in Scotland uh, a fair bit, and I am not aware of Australia's laws regarding... <laughs> Australia's laws regarding that kind of stuff. Um, I think we're a bit kind of late to the party with with uh, having good laws in regards. To <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that three <laughs> um, Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think Australia is a bit behind, uh, late to the party with that kind of thing. Uh, what's it called? E D A. What's the, what's <laughs> E150, the That's it. Yeah. I believe. And there's like A B and stuff. There's different versions. I think. B is the one that's used the most. Um, it's like the middle of the road one. Um, they're used in America, but America's pretty good with their laws. If it's called bourbon, it cannot legally have any dye in it. Uh, I, I, get, I don't know about Scotland, what their laws are to it. They do, it does exist though. Uh, and Australia, again, don't know. Australia's a bit all over the place with their liquor laws. Uh, I, like there's whiskies in Australia that are like 37 percent like Jim yeah. Beam in Australia is not 40 percent um but anyway they yeah they make a point to say that it's not in here yeah, which is it's funny that they mention it maybe that that is like the public's perception that they're all died you know in, in regards to whiskey in Australia uh but I, at the same time I am glad that it's not in there so you know good for them for, to not, for, for not adding it if they can you know I don't think uh, given the ambiguity with Australian laws when it comes to dyes and the whiskies and stuff, mm. they could have easily added it, but they are definitely trying to support their own claim to be very craft and boutique and uh, small yeah. scale. Now, uh, on the nose, <laughs> what do you get? Well, I just sniffed it very close and a loss of alcohol burn. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot um, deeper, richer. A lot than more the previous rounded. Um, yeah. And a lot. Funnily enough, like the alcohol is definitely higher, but the, uh, the sweetness is a more, it's a less generic sweetness. It's more caramel. It's more toffee. mellow caramel. It's, yeah, 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 exactly. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's it, it's a better sweetness in my opinion. Like the first one, if you haven't seen that episode, uh, we got fruit tingles, which is a like a sherbet fruit lolly kind of thing in Australia. Yeah. This, I don't get that on the nose as much. I think it's more deep caramels. Uh, I do get a fruitiness, but it's a bit more raisins and yeah, raisins. stuff like that. Um, it's really nice. I was actually enjoy this. Um, yeah, I enjoy it a lot more. It's a bit, it's a lot more potent. I, you do occasionally get that kick of alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I get like some um, nutty nuttiness running through as well. Um, like almonds. Almonds. I got the <laughs> voice crack. Yeah, I get, I, I get I, some yeah. almonds a bit. I don't know if it's almonds. Like, it's it's definitely a top of nut. I can't. It's just because I, I for me there's a little bit of that marzipan mm. uh, almondy kind of flavor to it. Yeah. So I, I think that's what's doing it for me. I'm gonna try it. Mm. Yeah. Woo! Kick. But the mm. flavor is so much more potent and a lot better. I don't get um, that perfume note I used to get. Yeah. It's a lot more, um, it's more thick, more... Tell you what this is reminding me of the most is the first Ben Rake cask strength we had. That like salted raisin note I'm getting quite heavily. On the nose, nothing is mm. super different compared to the uh, classic one, but this, the taste is a lot nicer. It's a lot richer. Yeah, but it is a lot hotter as well because of that cask strength. Looks like they made a mistake. <laughs> on the label, it's all handwritten on the labels. Yeah. And it looks like they've, they've written something and they've scribbled it out to change it with the actual percentage. I can't tell if it's that or if it's a signature. Why would they sign it? I don't the know end, why, but. I don't think it would. I mean, it might be a signature, but... Oh, the autofocus, thank God. <laughs> thank God we got a good camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do that on the bloody webcam <laughs> course. <laughs> Takes an hour for my auto to autofocus. Yeah, a lot hotter. Um, the flavours are a lot more enhanced than mm -hmm. the, um, the classic ears. I get uh, well, definitely raisins. Yeah, you know, it's, it's salty. Uh... There's some wood notes in it. Hints of vanilla. Just some vanilla, slightly. some caramel. Um, I still get some nuts. I don't nuts know, I are gone for me because of the heat, I reckon. Maybe mm. on the finish. It's a very hot whiskey. You have to like... Yeah. You have to <laughs> suck in a bit more oxygen than you normally would. Um, the finish, uh, what we experienced with the first one, if you haven't seen it, is a uh, the flavors were caught in a vacuum and just died after yeah. like two seconds of tasting it. You wouldn't swallow, but uh, the liquids would be in the liquid would be in your mouth, but you would just the flavor would just disappear. Yeah. Uh, that's not present in this. This uh, it stays where it is and it has a long finish. Yeah, you know, in the aftertaste, I get a a lot of um raisins, raisins on the aftertaste. Yeah. I'd say. But the they dark fruit, away. the sweet, some brown sugar. Yeah. Um, it's really, it's really raisiny. It's, I, I think for me, it's really sitting close. If you ever had batch, which I mean, a lot, most people won't have, the batch one of uh, Ben Rake's first ever cask strength release mm -hmm. they did tasted quite similar to this. I'm so glad we had that. I am too. Yeah, look, um, this one I think is pretty on par with the nose uh, to the classic single malt. Uh, I would definitely recommend buying the cask strength yeah. version though. The flavours are much better, they're much more intense. Uh, they don't disappear uh, after a few seconds. Just quickly, how much is the... Yes, that is something we do need to mention. <laughs> uh, at the moment, in Australia, this is $210. I don't know what to say. I don't want to say you shouldn't buy it because it's up to you. I don't not don't want to say it's not worth it because again, that's your decision to make. But for 500 mils, $210 is a lot. If you're craft. a Victorian support local business. <laughs> yeah, but also there's no age statement. I don't know what uh, you're paying for in regards to the $210 because I'm not sure it's age. It doesn't taste young, but it definitely doesn't taste old. No. Uh, we'll have to see that. I would love to visit them and get their kind of perspective, or get their perspective on the process and stuff. I'd love to learn more because they are local and I love that. Yep. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode of Everything Whiskey. If you liked it, uh, give us a like if you want to see the next episode, which is the cast strength peated version, which is the final episode for now on the Bakery Hill Distillery. Uh, do subscribe. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.